juggernaut. Attention consumers, certain... Hello and welcome to my top 50 Sega Game Gear games. The rules are simple, you must be able to play them without knowing Japanese, they must be a retail release only, and they must still be fun to play today. So without further ado, here are my top 50 Sega Game Gear games. Number 50, Virtua Fighter Animation, also known as Virtua Fighter Mini. The fighting is simple, it's pure. You've got this zooming in and out function where the further away from your enemy you are, the smaller you get. It's great. Number 49, Tatakai Pro Yakyu Twin League. Um, for some reason there are a ton of baseball games on the Game Gear. This is my personal favourite. I love the style. The gameplay is simple and frenetic and it's really enjoyable. Number 48, Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament. Now while it's a bit more difficult to play on the handheld due to the limited field of view, this is a real enjoyable game. Um, you can go versus, you can go head to head, and you can do a campaign single player. Number 47, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Short, simple, frenetic, action-based basketball at its finest. The original NBA Jam game was okay on the Game Gear 2, but this really pumped things up to 11. Absolutely fantastic. Number 46, Vampire Master of Darkness. Now this is Sega's answer to Castlevania. It doesn't quite hit those heady heights, but it is an enjoyable Metroidvania style platformer game. Number 45, Power Drive. Apologies for the visuals on this, it doesn't quite video properly, but this is a pre-rendered racing game similar to Donkey Kong Country, except for driving, and it's a really cool rally game. It's just you against one other player. Great fun. 44. Drop Zone. Take Defender. Take away the ship. Just you and a jetpack trying to save these little round balls which are supposed to be humans in this alien environment. Defend them from mutation. Um, it's a great simple arcade game. 43. Putt and Putter. Now this game is as enjoyable as it is utterly frustrating. Sometimes you get this pure elation when you get a hole in one, and the other time your ball will just have an unlucky bounce and will send it careening back to the beginning and it will drive you insane. But you keep coming back for more. 42. Ninja Gaiden. And it's a unique adventure purely for the Game Gear in the Ninja Gaiden series. It's not the best Ninja Gaiden game out of the lot, but it is still an enjoyable adventure. 41. The Terminator. Uh, Terminator on all three Sega formats is a fantastic game. The Game Gear version is just a portable version of the Master System game. And the Master System game was fantastic, so that's that's absolutely brilliant. Loved it. 40. Jungle Strike. This is probably the best handheld version of the Strike series available. Uh, Desert Strike and Urban Strike both blurred quite horrifically when you played it on the Game Gear screen, but the simplistic style graphics of Jungle Strike complement the handheld well. 39. Are you kidding me? Samurai Showdown for the handheld Game Gear. Believe it or not, this plays very well indeed. Of course it can't replicate the graphics of the arcade original. It can't even look like the Sega Mega Drive Genesis version. But what it can do is play a mean versus fighting game. 38. The second Terminator game on our list and the second Master System port of the Terminator game. This is phenomenal. It takes the 16-bit original of Robocop from Terminator, shrinks it down miraculously onto the handheld, still retains all the gore, still retains crisp, clean graphics and excellent level design. Number 37, Pete Sampras Tennis, available only on Game Gear and the Sega Mega Drive Genesis. Pete Sampras Tennis is probably one of the best arcade tennis experiences money can buy on any system, including current day ones. It's just perfect, really. 
number 36, and the first one on our list, Sonic the Hedgehog Chaos, also known as Sonic and Tails. It's a Sonic game, and it's on the Master System. It looks good, plays good, it's fairly smooth. It's not completely smooth, there are a frame the issue or two here and there, but it's a lot of fun. 35, NHL Hockey, and echoing what I said about Sonic a moment ago, this game's got a couple of frame rate issues, but it's a extremely enjoyable game. It's a very arcade style of hockey. Uh, it's one of the best sports games on the system, and it's one of the best hockey games ever created. 35, PLPO2. Listen to the music. That's all I'm going to say. It's a fantastic puzzle game with an awesome soundtrack. Thirty-three Tempo Junior, designed as a companion to the Sega 32X version of the game. This oozes charm from every pore. It's got delicious big sprites. Uh, it's got really nice levels. It's uh, non-linear. It's not just left to right. It's right to left. It's up to down. It's down to up. It's great. Thirty-two FIFA International Soccer, and it's almost as good as the 16-bit cousin of the game. Um, they somehow managed to cram one of the greatest football sims ever onto a handheld and make it really fun, really bright and crisp and colourful. Let's just not mention FIFA 96. Thirty-one. GG Shinobi or Shinobi GG. Um, it's a unique Game Gear entry into the Shinobi series and it's renowned for its insane difficulty. Uh, you've got multiple ways to complete the game. You can choose which order that you want to complete the levels in, but no matter which level you pick, it's going to hand your ass to you. 30. Sensible Soccer European Champions. Uh, you'd think that small sprites on a football game, fast paced, wouldn't work on a Game Gear due to the blurry screen, but on the contrary, Sensible Software decided to increase the size of the sprites to make sure that the Game Gear version of Sensi Soccer was one of the best out there and oozed playability from every pore. You will be running out those 6 AA batteries playing this and that stuff. 29. Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, another 16-bit version ported to the Master System which got the handheld treatment. This is one of the finest platform games around, it's definitely the best Mickey Mouse game in my humble opinion. Um, it's got some excellent puzzles, excellent platforming, it's got a great difficulty curve and it is an absolute essential purchase whether you're a fan of platformers or not really. This is great. 28. Space Harrier. Now this is a bit weird. It's the same as the Master System version in terms of engine, but they've completely changed the levels. They swapped out enemies, they've redrawn sprites for the bosses, and uh, they changed the level arrangement so that some levels come quicker than others. It's a bit weird in that regard, but it's still an awesome game, still worth checking out, even if I prefer the original Master System version. Number 27, The Excellent Dizzy Collection. Dizzy the Adventurer is one of three games available on this cartridge. It's a platform puzzle adventure game that's really good fun, excellent graphics and visual style. You also get a puzzle game called Panic Dizzy which isn't that good to be honest. And you also have a really fun maze type game called Go Dizzy Go which I'm playing right now and it's a lot of fun. Um, on the whole, three games in one, bang for your buck, really good. Number 26, Sonic Drift 2. This is Sega's answer to Super Mario Kart. Does it beat Super Mario Kart? Not a chance. Is it good? Absolutely. Um, this is a very difficult racing game. Um, you need to master the drift mechanic of your racer. Because it's at such a blistering pace set by this game, you will get corners coming up to you before you can react to them. So you really have to learn each corner of each racetrack. But it's fun. Number 25, Dynamite Heady, and another 16-bit game that was ported to Master System Game Gear. Um, this was a graphical tour de force on the 16-bit system, um, and the Master System and Game Gear versions are bright, colourful, beautiful renditions, and they don't catch that much out of the 16-bit original, to be honest. It's almost all here, with the exception of those isometric areas. 
absolutely brilliant platform game. It can be quite expensive now, but check it out. 24. Defenders of Oasis. It's not original in any way, shape or form. It doesn't excel in any way, shape or form, but what it is, is a solid all-round RPG. It's got fair RNG mechanics for the fight system, uh, it's got a great story, it's got neat graphics, it's got really pretty solid sound, if not exceptional. It's just got the whole package and it is a chat title you've got to check out. Number 23, Chuck Rock 2, Son of Chuck, and it's a gorgeous European platform game. It's got stylish, bright, bold, colourful levels, it's got a great design, it's got a high difficulty curve with plenty of challenge, and it's got a sense of humour. Number 22. Shinobi GG2 The Silent Fury takes the original game, ramps everything up, it's got better graphics, it's got better sound, and I've actually recorded the sound this time around. Um, while the level select has gone, the levels are more varied and slightly more difficult too in many ways. Twenty one Tails Adventure, an exclusive to the Game Gear. This takes Miles Tails Prower from Sonic 2 and puts him in his own slower paced arcade adventure. And it's a wonderful platform game. It's got great graphics, it's got great style, fantastic music, great difficulty curve. It's just great all round, really, and it's not just for kids. It's got a real challenge here. Give it a shot. Number 20, Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, Sonic and Tails 2. This is a fantastic game. It fixes a couple of the frame rate issues that Sonic and Tails 1 had. I prefer the level layout in this particular version of the game. Um, I think that Triple Trouble is right up there with some of the best Sonic games on any system. Number 19, Super Columns. The original Columns game didn't make my Master System, Mega Drive or Game Gear list, but Super Columns adds just so much to the package, it's got to be in here. Um, not only is Super Columns a great puzzle game, um, it's got a story mode now, um, it's got a versus flash mode, it's, it's got a whole host of features, it's just wonderful. And Columns is one of my favourite puzzle games anyway. Um, and it's one that, for some reason, you can zone out and just play for hours and hours and hours. I have wasted entire battery packs purely playing columns, and you will too. Number 18, GG Alesta. Now, Alesta is known as Power Strike on the Master System Game Gear. This is the first in the Game Gear exclusive series, and it is a blinder of a schmuck. Uh, it's got some great level design, it's got some frenetic action gunplay, it's got gorgeous graphics, great sound, excellent boss patterns and enemy pattern layouts, fantastic power-ups, it's just a superb shooter map that everybody should play if they're a fan of the genre. Number 17. Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap. I got a lot of flack for not including this on my Sega Master System list, uh, but I think it actually suits the Game Gear better, um, purely because it's got such bright, bold, beautiful coloured graphics um, that they don't really get blurred too much with the movement because the pace is a bit slower than other Wonder Boy games. Everything is clear and concise at any given time, and as a result of that, it makes the Game Gear version of Wonder Boy 3 one of the best platform games in the handheld, and it's a very good adventure platformer in its own right anyway. It may not be my favourite Wonder Boy game, but it's certainly worth checking out. 
2016, Wonderboy Revenge of Dranken. Now this is my favourite handheld Wonderboy game. Um, purely, not, well, not purely for nostalgia reasons, that would be wrong, but, but Wonderboy is the first game I ever played on my Game Gear, and I have such fun memories of just blasting through this game over and over and over again. And while I'm a bit rusty at the game now, I still get those feelings of excitement and joy every single time I play this game. It's it's glorious, it's big, it's bright, it's bold, it's colourful, it's beautiful, it's got a catchy, if slightly annoying tune, and it's just a wonderful addition to any Game Gear library. Number 15, Mortal Kombat. Much like the Master System version of its 16-bit cousin, it's incredible that they managed to fit Mortal Kombat onto an 8-bit system and made it play well. I mean, you could release any heap of crap on an 8-bit system and, and release it, but to actually make it fun and enjoyable in multiplayer and in single-player, that's, that's a phenomenal achievement. And it graphically looks pretty solid as well, considering it's digitized sprites on a 8-bit handheld. It's 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 phenomenal. Number 14, Mega Man. Uh, this is a unique, exclusive Game Gear experience in the Mega Man series. Uh, it kind of mixes um, a few enemies of Mega Man 4 and 5 with a whole new selection of levels exclusive for the Game Gear. It's hard as nails. It's it's Mega Man, basically. It's Mega Man. It's hard as balls. It looks plain, functional. It's got great music, though. And it's so addictive. You just keep letting it beat you over and over again and you're just determined to get through each and every level no matter how many times and how many hours it takes number 13 Road Rash I love Road Rash I loved it on the Mega Drive Stroke Genesis I loved it on the Master System I loved it on the Game Boy I loved it on the Game Boy Color so naturally I'm gonna love it on the Game Gear too it's a very, very close rendition to the 16-bit version. In fact, at a glance, if you just blink, you could think that this is the Mega Drive version running. It's quite an astounding achievement that they managed to get this rendition of the game so close to the original. It's still got all the gameplay in there, controls brilliantly, and the frame rate is a bit slow, but you can't have everything. What it has got is buckets and buckets and buckets of gameplay. Number 12, Power Strike 2, GG Alesta 2. This takes everything on the original game and just cranks it. You've got more enemies on screen, more bullets, more power-ups, more exciting, better levels, better graphics, more projectiles, more insanity as you play through this game. It's so much fun as a schmuck. It's so addictive. You just want to see what the next level brings and the level after and the level after that. Um, you will play this through, you will master the patterns quite quickly because you'll just play this non-stop until you complete it. It's just one of those games and when you complete it, you want to master it. Number 11. Sashu Shunen Ayoden Coca-Cola Kit. This is a brilliant piece of marketing by Sega and Coca-Cola. This basically takes everything 90s, backwards baseball caps, skateboards, Parkour, as it was evolving back then. I don't even think they called it parkour. I think they just called it free running still. Uh, but this just basically takes everything 90s, including karate enemies, and just wraps it up into the one superb, smooth, silky, gorgeous platform package. Uh, it's excellent fun, and it's still not too expensive, so you can pick it up for about £20 on the Game Gear, and I recommend you check it out. Number 10, Arena Maze of Death. Now I've never played this game before and I was recommended to check it out by a friend. Um, and I can't thank him enough. Arena Master of Death is one of the greatest Game Gear games. It's got um, excellent isometric art style, devilishly difficult puzzles. It's got some hardcore shooting in there as well. 
a lot of exploration. It's just it's just got the whole package for me. It's it's a wonderfully unique Game Gear title as well. There's no other game quite like it. And I think that Arena Maze of Death should be known by more people. Please check it out. Number 9. Axe Battler, a legend of golden axe. While they do say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, in that case, Zelda will be extremely flattered right now, because this is totally a rip-off of Zelda 2. Uh, everything from the... Uh, well, well, not exactly from Zelda 2. It's like a mixture of Zelda 1 and Zelda 2. You've got this overhead map screen, but you also have these side-scrolling platform elements as well. It's extremely difficult, but it's extremely fun. Um, the, the art direction kind of reminds me of the Super Nintendo game called Act Razor, which was in my top list for SNES. Um, and that's no bad thing by any means, stretch, you know. Um, Axe Battler, A Legend of Golden Axe is a highly sought after title for the game gear, and when you play it, you'll understand why. Number 8, Mortal Kombat 2! Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Getting Mortal Kombat 1 on the Master System and Game Gear was hard enough, but squeezing in Mortal Kombat 2 with even more characters to play, more blood, better graphics, more moves, keeping the frame rate as steady as it can possibly be, adding stage fatalities, friendships, how did they do it? They must be magicians, because there's no conceivable way that they could have squeezed the whole game into that little memory and still produced a fine, fine fighting game. I am astounded and I can't recommend Mortal Kombat 2 enough. Number 7, Crystal. This was a pleasant surprise. The Mega Drive Genesis version nearly made my top 50 list. It didn't quite make the cut, but I'm pleased to say that this Game Gear version does. It's gorgeous. It's a wonderful Game Gear game. The graphics are exceptional, considering the limitations of the system. The level design is devilishly difficult. Um, don't let the cutesy looks fool you. This is a hard platform game. It's got plenty of challenge, plenty to keep you interested in. Lots of hidden items and lots of hidden areas. There's lots of different mechanics that get carefully introduced as you explore the levels. And Ristar is just a wonderful unsung hero for the Game Gear. And I think that everybody who likes a platformer should like Ristar. Number 6, everyone who likes a platformer knows this one, Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, I am in a rare camp. I think that the 8-bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog is better than the 16-bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog. And I'll tell you why. The levels are more crisp and concise. They still keep the flow of speed going at all times. It's very intelligently designed. They've added a couple of features that weren't evident in the 16-bit versions, and the bridge level is one of my favourite platform levels of all time. It's, it's just really well designed while still remaining very challenging. Oh, and the music is pretty cool too. And I like the fact that they redesigned the Sonic sprite completely for the Game Gear version. It's different to the Master System version, which used the same sprite as Sonic the Hedgehog 2 did. Number 5, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I think this surpasses the original in every way, shape and form. It's smoother, it's faster, it's bolder, it's more difficult. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful game. It's one of the greatest platformers of our time. They've added some new tricks over the original game in this one. You can collect rings like you could on the 16-bit version. You couldn't do that on Sonic 1. Um, you can also jump into minecarts and you've got some colliding levels too, which were unique to this particular version of the game. You didn't get it on the 16-bit systems. Uh, I think that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Master System of Game Gear is better than the 16-bit version and I think it's a wonderful platform game that everybody will enjoy. Number 
number four, Fatal Fury Special. Now you know how I was saying it's astonishing that Mortal Kombat 2 made it. I'm even more astonished about Fatal Fury Special. It's got so many characters, so many moves, it's got really good animation, it runs in a fair clip, and it plays a mean game of Fatal Fury Special. Every combination that you could pull off in the arcade version of the game, you can pull off in the Game Gear version. It's a masterpiece in design. It's a masterpiece in porting. I don't know how Takara did it, I really don't. And it is one of the best fighting games on any handheld, period. Um, if you can look past the, the admittedly aging graphics, Fatal Fury Special's combo system, fighting mechanics, and AI are phenomenal. Number 3. Streets of Rage 2, Bare Knuckle 2. The premier scrolling beat'em up available for the Game Gear. It beats every other game in the genre by a mile, including the original Streets of Rage 1, which for some reason they changed the graphics from the Sega Master System version and made it even blurrier and even duller and even harder to see. I don't know why, but I digress. Streets of Rage 2 is a blinder. It's got nice clear visuals, it's got remixed levels so that even if you've played the 16-bit version of Death, you still have something interesting and new to explore and to visit and to master in this version of the game. Uh, it also changes the level layout of the bosses too, so you're always facing a new challenge. Number two, Gunstar Heroes. Wow. Who in their right minds thought that one of the, the most graphically stunning, graphically intensive Sega Mega Drive Genesis games would make a great handheld version? Um, somebody out there thought it was a good idea, and they were absolutely right. Gunstar Heroes on the Game Gear is, well, first off, it's not available on the Master System. This is a Game Gear exclusive version of the game, and it is amazing, really. It's got sprite scaling, it's got bosses out the yin yang, it's got monsters and enemies coming out left, right, and centre. The amount of sprites on screen is ginormously intense. It's just, it's a crazy game, and it's crazy good fun, and I absolutely love Gunstar Heroes. I love the way that you can choose your levels, I love the way that every fight is an intense, exciting battle. Well we've gone through 49 out of 50, before I reveal number 1, let's see some honourable mentions that didn't quite make the list. They're still good games though, so check them out.
here we are, the big kahuna, the number one of my top 50 Sega Game Gear games. It's been a long road, there are some difficult decisions made along the way, but my personal number one Game Gear game of all time is Shining Force, The Sword of Tarja. Now this is the second of three Shining Force games released on Game Gear. It's the only one that was released in English. For some reason, Shining Force Gaiden, the first game, and Shining Force 3 were never released in the UK or the US. They never got translated officially to English, which is a bit of a shame. Um, this one takes uh, its story about a decade after the 16-bit Shining Force 2, and it's a direct continuation of Shining Force Gaiden. Um, unlike the 16-bit versions of Shining Force, the Game Gear games focus entirely on the nitty-gritty, the combat of games. Uh, it doesn't really focus on exploration that much, which the 16-bit versions did. There is no filler. They've, they've really crammed it down to the pure essence of what makes a great RPG. Um, people who may like a, a larger side order of kind of role-playing games, exploring for towns and that kind of thing, they may be a little disappointed with this game, but me, I always found that cumbersome anyway. Personally, Shining Force 2 is everything I want out of an RPG. It's, it's got a great story, it's got great combat, it's got fantastic visuals. It may not look it from the overview screens here, but when you're actually in a battle, it's so detailed and so wonderfully drawn. It brings you in and it grabs you. It's a really good game. It's got a little bit of humour in there as well. It doesn't take itself too, too, too seriously. And it's such a great game. It's it's exactly what you'd hope from a Shining Force title, and it's exactly what I want out of an RPG. And I hope you enjoyed this top 50 Sega Game Gear games. It took me a long time to put together due to a hard drive crash, but we got there in the end. Um, I want to thank you for watching, and please feel free to check out my Patreon. No pressure, it's there if you want to have a look. If not, that's totally cool. I'm happy enough with you just watching my videos. And speaking of my videos, if you like what I'm doing, please give me a like, comment, and maybe subscribe. If you'd like to see another system coming out in the future, let me know which one in the comments below. Until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Bye for now.